Hey everyone, so this week we started playing the Stanley Parable. I'm vaguely familiar with the game. It used to be a mod from uh, the old Half-Life game, so it's kind of been around for a while, but it hasn't been a standalone game until this recent one that we downloaded came out. Um, just to burn right through the three questions or two questions that we're supposed to really answer on this is what was our initial impression or can we qualify it as a game based off of our first first playthrough and I think that entirely depends on what you do in the first playthrough the first time I played through it I went and did exactly what the narrator said and the game was over instantly five minutes the game the game ended or restarted more or less um, based off of that you can't really um, Based off of that, you can call it a game, but it's a lot harder to define it as a game with the strict definitions or the strict um, four characteristics of a game. It doesn't really seem like a goal is clear except maybe reach the end, which is extremely unfulfilling if you do it exactly how the narrator tells you to. Um, it's only through repeated plays that the game starts to become more or less a game. The goal still isn't really clear, but I feel like the goal is more up to you as the player. It, uh, is the goal to find out all these things about Stanley, the, or to find out how to get out, to find out where the other people in the office are? It, it, I feel like it's left up to your satisfaction of the game once you burn out, or once you get burned out playing it. Um, just going off of the characters, the characters to start playing further and further into the game to, to get more in-depth with them. Um, aside from the fact that the goal is questionable, but I think if you try hard enough, you can figure out a goal, whether that's um, getting to the end the first way around or finding out if the end is the real end, and there might really be an end that we don't know about because we haven't played a ton of it yet or haven't dug deep enough into the game. Um, or maybe it's getting to all the endings and finding out all the different possibilities there are for Stanley or yourself. Um, there's probably others that I'm missing too. Like I said, it's left up to the interpretation of the player. Um, the rules aren't really specific other than the standard walking and where you can go. Um, there's more directions though, which I can consider kind of like rules, but the directions are given to you by the narrator. and the game only really starts to open up if you disobey those directions, if you stop following the rules that are that are handed to you and start exploring more and becoming more independently um, thoughtful of what's going on around you. Um, the system of feedback, uh, there's no score, there's really no acquired skill. Um, however, there is areas that become unlocked when you continue to play the game. So I feel like that is some sort of system of feedback. You continue to dig deeper and deeper and more areas become open to you to access. There, there are no items for you to interact with. There's really nothing for you, or there are no items for you to interact with, but there are objects around you. There's no inventory, but there's doors. There's one level where the phone's ringing in the middle of this dark room, and it seems like your only option is to pick up the phone and deal with whatever's ringing on the other end, or you can do what I did and find the plug-in of the phone and unplug it, which is an obvious option and is something to interact with. Uh, when you do that, the narrator kind of loses his mind and starts to realize that you actually aren't Stanley and you're a real person, and that's kind of a huge moment, I feel, in the game, too, because it opens up your thinking to, have we just been Stanley all along, or are we expected to always follow these mundane quick tasks to to get to what we want in life the fastest, which in this game is reaching the end, which happens extremely quick if you follow all the all the things. But is that satisfying to the player? I don't really think so. Um, and then also voluntary participation. Um, I kind of feel like you're Involuntary par involuntarily participating if you play the game exactly how the narrator wants you to. You kind of play ex ex like Stanley. You just do exactly what you're told, like what you're supposed to do, what you've always done, and you get to the end. It's not really you participating much. It's more you just following the directions, and that's that. Uh, once you start to voluntary participate, voluntarily participate and do things independently and be an independent thinker in the game does it really start to open up and and become crazy and thought-provoking. 
So I feel like it has most of the major components of a, of a game. It might not have all of them very clearly, but I think they're there. But I also think this is one of those games, along with Mountain, where the gaming industry has been changing so much that do we really need to follow those four simple qualifications or four simple things that qualify a game to be a game? Is that... Is that still relevant now with all the technology with how such game interactions are interactive? Can we bend those rules a little bit to consider a game something or consider something that could be questionable actually a game? Uh, I feel like now we really can because of just what's being applied now towards gaming. Everything is kind of questionable. It's more than art and it's how you perceive it. So in my opinion, I think it is a game. I would consider it a game. By the very, very, very strict definitions given in the reading, I would say it's debatable. Um, a game I want to talk about that I think has very clear directions that I really enjoy is Hitman, or the Hitman series, particularly uh, Absolution, which is for uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and I think PC probably. But the objective of the game is really simple, eliminate the target um, by any means possible. Um, the rules are, they kind of change from each level, but essentially it's don't get caught, or if you do get caught, evade. Uh, evade capture. Uh, the system of feedback is one of my favorite things of any game I've played. It's especially in Absolution. The system of feedback is a massive point scale based on where you go, what method of assassination you try to do, whether it's poisoning their food with rat poison or shooting them from two buildings away or causing a chandelier to fall on their head. Um, it's all in a huge point system and those points can be compared with other players around the globe and it kind of creates an independent competition where you feel satisfied by getting more points through playing the game further and further or playing the same levels over and over again and trying other things. Um, it's also completely, all the participation is voluntary. There's so many different options for you to choose. There's so many different routes to finish every single level to where you can kind of do whatever you want and there is some outcome that will be there that couldn't be to you finishing that level. Uh, and that's... And that's that's really about it. I feel like that's one of the more clear-cut four basic um, qualifications to a game in the Hitman series. Uh, it's one of my favorite games. I, Stanley Parable I thought was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed watching some more videos of what other people have experienced online. And I'm probably going to keep playing it because it's, it's interesting. It continues to make you think, which I think is one of the best components of gaming is what brings you back, and that is you have a craving to see what else is actually out there. And yeah, that's that's how I feel about the Stanley Parable and other video games. See ya.